Aloha and welcome to our Word of Life radio program here in wonderful Okinawa, Japan. We give glory to the Lord of the hearts. There's a harvest blessing here for you tonight. This morning, I'd like to minister on finishing strong, finishing 2017 in strong relationship with your Heavenly Father in order to experience a breakthrough 2018. The story that I've just read, I've taken a portion of um, a hefty and well-read story um, of what's called the prodigal son, but it's not referring to a gender only, it's referring to both men and women. But it's a story with great value, has great insight if we have ears to hear, but the Spirit of God wants to speak to us. And um, a prodigal is simply, the word prodigal is a person that's been wasteful with their life. In the story, if you've read it, <clears throat> it's about a person who demands his inheritance from his father, runs away from home, and lives recklessly and in an unabandoned kind of way, and empties his life and ends up in the pig pen of life to where he comes to his senses. <clears throat> but a prodigal is a person who, it's not like you have to have bags of money, but is a person who has spent his greatest treasure in the wrong place. His greatest substance, um, what's most wealthy to him in an unrestrained and reckless manner. A prodigal, the story of the prodigal is a picture of an individual that's self-consumed, um, self-focused only on self-gratification without regard to others, let alone the father of the house. In other words, he lives selfish, self-consumed, self-centered. But what is the greatest treasure that I would be bringing this up? The greatest treasure is your life. Not so much pockets of money or an inheritance that you may or may have not in inherited. The story of a prodigal is not just a story of what we shouldn't do, but what we must do if we're ever going to finish strong in anything God asks us to do. And he's asked us to do some amazing things. You know, I want to say Happy New Year's Day because it's not Eve yet. Happy New Year's Day to all of us. You know, 2017, the finish line is but hours away as we all stand together. And finishing 2017 is a desire, I believe, on everyone's heart. I know some of the questions that we might have. But 2017's race and finishing it strong is key to starting 2018's race strong. Every race, I used to run track and field, but I know you cannot tell, but nevertheless, trust me when I tell you this. Um, every race has basically a start and a finish. It's important how you start. It's also very important how you finish. You know, Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 9 that when, when you run a race, make sure you run to win. Although when you win, you're not going for a prize that's man given that can corrode over time or deteriorate but actually it's more eternal yet paul the apostle on his last uh in his last days of his life he said first timothy i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith how you finish this year as jonathan said a moment ago directly impacts how you start next year there is something to be said about what we call next week, First Sunday. Something very biblically significant, powerful about firsts, which I'm not going to talk about now because we're not there. But it is important how you finish. God is very interested and cares a lot about how you finish what you start. 
Many people are notorious for starting things, little projects, big projects, spiritual projects, natural projects, you know, and not finishing. It's a habit that you don't want to build. Paul the Apostle, in fact, says this um, in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. He says, what matters most to me is to finish what God started. The job the master Jesus gave me of letting everyone I meet know all about this incredibly extravagant generosity of God. That's a reference to God's grace. But notice what it says, the principle. What matters most to me is to finish what God started. Some of you might say, God hasn't started anything. Oh, yes, he has. If you consider yourself born into this world, God started. What he started is to reach out to those of you who do not yet know him yet. If you are born again, the day you were born again, God started something amazing on the inside of you. Now, you may be frustrated or might have not seen much fruit or might maybe not even be as interested as whoever you might be thinking about. But let there be no question God has started something and he wants to complete it through you. In fact, the Bible does say that God, he's, Paul says, I am fully persuaded that what God has begun or started in you, he will complete or finish it and keep on working on it, developing it until the day of his return. In other words, no matter how you may think, no matter how you may feel, God is still working in your favor. Say God is good. And there's something to be said about the year. Uh, I've taught before about the power of one year. What amazing things can happen in the course of one year. And, um, and it does make a difference. I mean, you know, the proverbial statement is how do you eat an elephant? The answer is what? One bite at a time. Yeah, I personally don't like elephant. But, um, and if you offered it to me, I'd probably go for a hamburger. But anyways, the point I'm trying to share with you is uh, it, it's more of, you know, you have to break down your life. Sometimes we can get very overwhelmed by life and it becomes overwhelming. And just like you want to break down your year into months and into weeks and you have benchmarks so you can progressively go forward in life. And that's really how you tackle life. The way you look at your overall life is one year at a time. There's much to be said about the power of one year. For example, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I believe it begins with verse 10. He says, so here's what I think. The best thing you can do right now is to finish what you started last year. And not let those good intentions grow stale. Your heart's been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish it up, so go to it. Once the commitment is clear, you do what you can, not what you can't. The heart regulates the hands. Now, what that says, you do what you can. In other words, you can't do what only God can do, but God will not do what you and I should do. God expects you and I to trust him, to obey him. What he does is he empowers us and he blesses us. So, but I think that's important for you and I to understand that God says that you and I have what it takes to finish. So maybe your year has been good. Maybe your year has been better than good. Maybe it's the best year you've ever had, or maybe it's not. I know every day wasn't a great day, but, um, but what I'm trying to share with you, there is something to be said about the power of one year. Your entire, the shift of your life can happen if you were to focus on one year. I'm not here to talk about that as much as I've always been interested in people who have a heart of pursuit. Have you ever seen those athletes or those uh, entrepreneurs or um, an individual who's, whose heart is so impassioned to do uh, some righteous act, whether it's to invent or to create or to participate in some field of endeavor? And we often say, you know, 
boy, don't they have heart. They might not have all the skill set, all the grace, as the next person who's been, you know, who knows the certain ways of maybe a particular field. But the comment that you often hear is, boy, didn't they have heart? Didn't they have guts? It's something about them that drove them across the finish line or caused them to do. It didn't look all that pretty all the time. But the heart is what, you know, causes us to, to rise up and pay attention. A heart I'm talking about that is unshakable to why it's doing what it's doing. You've often heard me say that it's the why behind the what of a person that causes a person to do what they're doing the right way. When we lose our why behind the what and just get caught up in what we're doing and forget why we're doing what we're doing, life doesn't begin to make sense. You can find a number of various reasons as to why you don't want to pursue. There will never be enough passion to finish what it is that you started. And um, the why, I call it the fuel of a person's conviction. A conviction that's born out of the heart. A heart captured by an unshakable why. I once had a coach that said to me, and it sounds kind of funny. He says, remember to forget but don't forget to remember. I said, what? He said, remember to forget, but don't forget to remember. And, and what he meant is this. He says, when you're running your race, he was talking about running races. When you're running your race, don't get caught up and start thinking about what you haven't done. That will weigh you down. It'll get you in the negative mindset. Don't dwell on those things that hold you back that you really can't change. He says, but remember to never forget why you're running the race you're in. Because he said, if you lose focus, you won't have the passion to finish what you started. And it's so true that a lot of us, because life kind of hits us from the side, from the left, from the right, from the up, from the down, even when we're doing everything we know to do correctly, sometimes we carry little, little areas, little areas of discouragement. Maybe we're just in heart because something didn't work out in our favor the way we thought. Or we thought we'd be further along after setting a particular goal at the beginning of 2017 and we're just not much further along. Don't forget the why behind the what. If you get lost in the what, lose the why, you'll never finish what you started. And God says, in everything he gives you to do, Finish strong. Say, I will finish strong. Turn your neighbor and say, you will finish strong. The Holy Spirit also gave similar counsel through Paul the Apostle again. Why I'm bringing up Paul a lot? Because there's an ongoing theme through the New Testament. Starting and finishing. Starting and finishing. Starting and finishing. Um, for example... In Philippians chapter 3, it says, I believe it goes up on the screens from the Message Bible. It says, I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. Verse 15 and 16 says, so let us keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment he says, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Verse 17, 19. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running this same course, headed for this same goal. There are many out there taking other paths choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is Easy Street. They hate Christ's cross. But Easy Street is a dead-end street. I've learned, like probably many of you, the adversary is a distractor. But he's not greater than the God you and I serve. Going back to the prodigal son. The prodigal son is a story of a person 
who's reconnecting with his father. Biblically, it's an illustration like the roll-in video to help you understand what God wants out of our lives. He wants you in love with him as he loves you. I want you to hear this because the story of the prodigal son or daughter is, a, yes, about a person wasting their most valued treasure, their life. You know, but it's also, and more importantly, <clears throat> a story of the unrelenting, unconditional love of God for you and I in our absolute display of imperfection and weaknesses. I mean, there's no hiding. The church is not perfect. Some of you should have gone, whew, I thought it was. Anyways, it's a picture really of God's heart. You know, you, I can get up here, we could talk about the do's and don'ts of the product, or this, and the other. it would be accurate, correct, and not unbiblical to do so. But if you look at it, you'll see the heart of the Heavenly Father. But it's also a story of one step the adversary, the devil himself, would never want you to make or believe in, let alone act upon. What a great way of closing 2017, guaranteed of a strong 2018. Coming home. As I said earlier, there is two kinds of prodigals. And sometimes we just begin to come to our senses as the first one did. And the beauty is, and you need to, apologize, didn't have enough time, but all he did, the Bible says he rose up, one translation says, from the place where he was and started going home to his father. And when he was Far, far off, the father saw him. See, the father sees the moves of your heart. He sees the why you're making a step, taking a step, making an action. But when he sees the brokenness of a tender heart, the wanting to come home, you have to realize he just got up out of a pig pen. He was not clean. He was not perfect. His mind was not renewed. He was not instantly transformed. You know, he was probably with every, with the first step. Who knows the battle he, that went on in his mind before he took the first step. And yet that's the most powerful step because the moment he rose up and took the first step, the father saw where he was. And although he was far, far away, the Bible says that the father or not the natural father, our heavenly father is like moved with love and compassion. And all he wants to do is embrace. And the kiss is the kiss of approval and acceptance. There's no dialogue there about shame or disgrace. Now let's go over your history here. And then what happened is many of you know, he told the father turns to his servants and he says, bring the best robe out. You know, let's cut the fatted calf. He says, let's cover him with the royalty that belongs to him. He said, put a ring on his finger, which is his, part of his identity of the household that he belongs to. Put sandals on his feet that his walk from here on out would not be painful, would be graced. And he said, let's celebrate. One move, one step. The enemy was probably bombarding him with, hey, you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough. You, you threw away your inheritance, you selfish fool. You, you are still unperfect. You still have questions and doubts. But it just took one step. And that's the one step that we, the church, have to be willing to take to close out 2017, to not assume that everything's going to be okay. 
It's a picture of how the Father looks at you. But He cannot do anything if you don't even want to take the first step. All that was waiting for Him. He was thinking of His failures, His lost inheritance, His wasted life. God was thinking of how He wanted Him back in the home so that He can finish His life strong again. And that's true about all of us. And if ever there was an encouraging message, I find it in the prodigal. Because no person has to be a prodigal with that kind of unconditional, unrelenting love that he has for us. I just find that so encouraging. I just really do. And so I ask you to bow your heads for a moment. Close your eyes if you don't mind. And Father, we come before you this morning and there's not a person in this room, Father, that can't find some area of examination in our lives. But this is a morning of consecration. This is a morning where... Father, in closing off our year, for some, maybe this would be their the final service of 2017, Lord. I trust they'll be back tonight, but maybe this is the final service of 2017. And it would behoove us, Lord, to not, to not make this kind of decision in the close of a, a year, good, bad, or indifferent, however it was. With all of our weaknesses and imperfections and still faults, as you saw that young man rise up from the pig pen, he left the place where he was. He was willing to be broken and contrite. He was willing to come home. Little did he know what you had in store for him. I pray that you would give us a glimpse of what you have in store for every believer in your family called the church. As your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Where do you stand this morning? Maybe your life isn't right with Christ. Maybe you do need to be born again and come home. You just heard of a story of how much God loves you and what he has in store for you. It's not the place where you're at that's going to make you happy. It's going to eventually empty you out. No matter who you surround yourself with, who... You're related to whatever it is that's going on there. Your greatest life is found in the house of God, with the heart of God. God's calling you to come home. But also, if you're in the house, and you know your heart isn't where it should be, not because you're doing something wrong, or you, because things have gotten in the way, whatever they were, not sin per se, Maybe it is, but it doesn't have to be that to have your heart away from the heart of the Father. But are you captured by the heart of the Father? Can you answer that question with an affirmative yes? Because he's ready. If you want to leave that place, he's ready for you to clothe you, to put the signet ring on you. But use sandals on your feet and to celebrate you so that you can finish life strong. Not just 2017, but life. You can't do it without coming home. You can't do it without a heart towards the Father. It's the Father's heart that you seek. Not someone else's heart. Not something else. He alone ought to be the priority of your life. If He's not, as your eyes are closed and your hearts are open, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He wants you part of his family. I want to pray for those of you in this room right now that say, Pastor Art, I need to make a decision to be embraced by the heart of the Father. I want to reconsecrate my life. I want to rededicate, recommit my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, to live for Him, to live with the heart of the Father. I want to get back to why, to what I'm doing in this life. I want to sense Him again and know His presence again. I don't want to hide behind titles and functions and just the life as I have it. I want to get back to that place of innocence. I will change. 
I want to make that inner change. If that's you, and you want me to pray for you right where you're standing. It'd be an honor to pray for you because that's how we're going to close off it. You're strong. I'm just going to ask as your eyes are closed, your heads are bowed, your heart is open. Say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? If that's you right now, I just want you to raise your hand all over this room. Just raise it. Say, Pastor, right, I want, I admit I need God's help right now. I'm not where I need to be, not where I used to be, but I want to get back to where he wants me to be. Just raise your hands all over this room right now. Thank you so much for raising your hands. You can put your hands down. Thank you. You're acknowledging your need for him, and he is here for you. It's very powerful. Only when you look this way, it's very powerful. And not everyone is coming from the same side, same side of the mountain, so to speak. You have different mountain climbers. We're all looking at it from a different way. But it's, it's important that you know that you have a need. What's dangerous is you think God's not speaking to you. That's not to assume that everything is incorrect, but I'm here to say how you close off 2017 is exactly how you open up 2018. Sounds like a nice phrase more powerful than sometimes we realize those people that raise their hands I'd like to pray for you I'm going to pray for that God would bless you and that God would because we close off this year in a very powerful way I want to do one thing I want to ask if you would step out in the nearest aisle come and stand down here with me wherever you are you can come with your spouse you can come with yourself you can come with a friend Just, I want to invite you to come down if you would please now but sometimes there are greater things that get in our way. The strength of pride is never to be undervalued. But be careful that you don't fear it. The strength of pride. Pride keeps you back from making decisions for God because it can never be you. Because it never is about you. Whether I'm the titled pastor, couldn't be me. Couldn't be us on platform. Could be all of us on platform. Be all of us in here. Because God was speaking to his church. Think about that. That church that was doing everything right. Can I have my pastors come forward, please? And G12 leaders. Doing everything right. And all of a sudden, a vision comes. I'm talking about the book of Revelations. And this is shared. And they're standing against evil. They're standing against wrong. And God says, I have this one thing against you. I ask you the question, church. Does God have that against you? Don't close out your year in 2018. With that being, I don't think so. If you say, I don't think so, then you don't know so. I would rather know so than just think so. Pride. Very dangerous. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. This morning, I thank you. That you're welcoming us to come to a place, Father, that maybe some of us have slipped from. Not because of sin or transgression, always, Lord. But maybe some of us are here because we have allowed some things to get involved in our private life that we've hidden. And we maybe we've hidden behind this or that or the other. Lord, we'll let you speak to us about those things personally. But, Father, what I do see is the hunger Father God of your church, that wants to come back to a strength that only you can provide. Father God, there's no, there's no one message or no preacherism or no building or location or geographical um, placement, Father God, that brings this to bear. But you, by the Holy Spirit alone, can reveal these things. And the tenderness of your people called the church, Lord God, is that we all, Father God, long after you and want to know you greater than we've known you, Father God. And maybe we have fallen from a place that in innocence we didn't even know we got to. But in our innocence, we come before you and we ask, Lord God, we come to, to change, to get back to that place, that tenderness of heart towards you, that genuineness of love, Father God, an authentic passion, Father God, that is, that is of the Holy Spirit working in our lives in all the areas of our lives, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, domestically, in our families. If we've not been the fathers that we need to be or the mothers 
or the parents or the children of our families, Lord, that we've needed to be, then we come before you humbly. And we ask, Lord God, by your work of your grace, by the work of your mercy, in bed in our hearts right now, Lord God, that picture, Father God, of a prodigal coming back, who for whatever reasons, Father God, misplaced their hearts, misplaced their heart. Maybe they were outside the house, or maybe they were in the house. But we don't want to be misplaced, Lord God. おはようございます。土曜日の朝どのようにお過ごしでしょうか。沖縄の方では今週は桜が咲きましたというニュースを聞きながら、昨日はみぞれが降りましたというす。なんともなんともこの1月らしい天気が続いております。この朝も。とっても寒い朝を迎えていますけれども、風など召されてないでしょうか、知り合いもインフルエンザだとか、風邪ひいただとかっていう声があちらこちらから聞こえる、そんな毎日なんですけれども、皆さん大丈夫ですか。特に本土の方でネット環境からご覧いただいている皆様、本当に寒いと思いますので、体には気をつけてくださいね。この朝なんですけれども、この朝、ハワイの方のパスタアートのメッセージは、去年の最後の礼拝の模様をお伝えしました。2017年の12月の31日に、モノルルの方で行われたメッセージを今日は皆さんと一緒にお聞きしましたけれどもパスタートが去年のその2017年の締めくくりと2018年に向かってどんなように過ごしていこうかっていうようなことを話していました。今年も2週間ほど過ぎましたけれども皆さん今年はどんなふうに過ごされますでしょうか2018年の目標は決まられましたか私ももうずっと年明けからいくつか計画を立てていろんなことをやっていますけれども2017年から18年にかけて一番このワードブライフハワイというラジオ番組について大きなこととすれば FM コザの方で始めさせていただいたこの番組が途中で FM ギノワンが加わって今月から FM 那覇が入ったというこの3つの曲においてこの放送ができているということがやはり一番大きなことの一つかなと思ってます私たちのその思いというのはもう本当に一人でも多くの人に私たちの良き神からのメッセージを聞いていただきたいなって思ってます。ですので本当にこれからも、まあ、今年の計画というよりはこれはもう少し長い長期的な計画なんですけれども本当に沖縄にある地域の FM 局全部カバーできたらいいなーなんて思ってたりもしますなので今年2018年、まあ、2017年の終わりから今年にかけて、えー、私が考えることは2つですね一つはもう本当に一生懸命力強く毎日の生活を送っていくっていうことでしょうか
あなんかもう疲れちゃったとかダメとかって思ってるとどうしても自分の心の状況というかまあよくマインドセットって言いますけれどもそのマインドセットがいい状態にはなってないっていうことですね。ですのでそのマインドセットをいい状態にしてそれはどういうことかというと勝利者の態度っていうことですね。もう競争とか勝負の世界で常に勝ってるよっていうそういう態度で1年間過ごしていくってことが大切なのかなって思ってます。でその勝利者としての態度を持って2018年の12月31日にもあ今年も力強く終えたよねっていうことをできたらいいなって思ってます。特に目の前にあるその状況とか目の前にある問題とかに負けてしまうとどうしても気持ちがなえてしまってその場所にとどまってしまうそしてその目の前にあるその問題ばっかり見てそのつらいことばっかり見てその場所にしばらくいるとその辛い状況が実は心地よくなってしまったりするんですねああ辛いなあ大変だなあって思うことを感じることに安定感を求めてしまったりとかそこに安定を見出してしまったりするっていうことがありますなので私たちは本当に自分は大丈夫自分はもういろんな問題に対して克服してるしこの問題を克服することもできるっていうふうに思いながらもう私は徒競走とかいろんな大会に出て時にその1位になる勝利者であるっていうようなことを思って毎日を生きたらいいのではないかなって思います。そこで一箇所だけこの朝まずは聖書の中から御言葉を皆さんと分かち合いたいんですけども「新約聖書」の中に「第一コリント」というところがあります。この「九章の24節」というところがあるんですけれどそこにはこういうふうに書かれています。競技場で走る人は皆走っても賞を受けるのはただ一人だけだということを知っているでしょうですからあなた方も賞を受けられるように走りなさいというふうに書かれています昔本当に神様を信じ始めた頃っていうのは聖書って優しいことばっかり書いてあるのかなって思って慰めのことばっかり書いてあるのかなって思ってた時期もありましたけれどもなかなかここは私たちの毎日の人生を励ますようななかなか厳しい例えを使って話をしているんですけれどもこれどんなことが背景にあるかというとここの場所を書いた人はパウロっていう人が書いています。でこのパウロという人はここの部分では私たちが神様を信じることを競争に例えて話していますじゃあなんでそんなことをしたのかなっていうとこのパウロっていうのがこの時よく神様のことを、えー、いろんな国々に伝えるのを宣教というんですけれども日本語では教えを述べ伝えるっていうふうに書きますけれども宣教をするんですけれどもこの宣教をした地域というのが今でいうギリシャのあたりなんですね。というと何があったかというと当時やはり同じように競技会があってでその競技会で競争してた選手たちを例えとして使って書かれたところになります。じゃあ賞を取るっていうことはどういうことなのかということなんですけども
、皆さんスポーツをやったりとか、まあ、勉強もしっかりかと思いますし何か集中して習い事をした時にその時のことを少し思い出していただきたいのですが何か少し高いところに行きたい少し高いところというのは賞、えー、を取ったりとかみんなよりも引いてたところに行きたい時にどういうふうにするかというとやっぱり自分自身が自ら進んで練習をしますよね。例えばスポーツであれば体を鍛えたりとかそれに向かって練習をしたりとか何か勉強であれば一生懸命そのことについて勉強したりとか趣味とかそういう世界であれば極めるべく師匠についたりとかいろんなことをされると思いますなので賞を取るということはどういうことかというとある意味自ら自制をして自,あの自分自身をコントロールしてですねそのことに向かって歩んでいく走っていくっていうことが大切なのかなというふうに思いますそれともう一つその競技もしくは勉強とかそれからその趣味でその領域を極めるときには例えばこの朝はちょっとマラソンに例えてみたいなと思うんですけれども12月の第1日曜日には沖縄では那覇マラソンがありますし来月ですか来月は沖縄マラソンもあるかと思いますけれども必ずそのマラソンのトップグループを走る人たちの格好ってよく似てたりしますよね。でこれは何かとというとその走りやすい服装とか走りやすいシューズを選んで必ず走っているということですなので私たちがその競技とかいろいろなことで勝利を得るためにはどうしているかというともちろん自ら進んで自分を訓練したり鍛えたりするんですけども合わせてどんな格好でどんなふうにし,しなくてはいけないかその競技のためとかその勉強のためとかその趣味のために最もふさわしい服装をしたりその用具を選んだりするということです。ですので私たちがこの2018年本当に「あよかったね」って思うようなその一年にするには自ら進んで何かをする目標に立ててそれに向かって自ら何かをしていくということが大切であるということです。でそれに向かってそれがやりやすい服装であるとかその用語を正しく選んでいくということです。例えば自分の健康を守ります。自分の適正な体重を守っていきますというようなことを考えたとしたらまず暴飲暴食はできなくなりますよねよく沖縄では夜真夜中にステーキを食べるとかっていうことを聞きますし私もその昔真夜中の2時ぐらいにステーキ食べに行ったこともありますけれどもこういう生活をやはり続けていくとやっぱ体にはあんまり良くないだろうなって思ったりもしますなので適正な体重を保ったりとか適正な健康を示す数値を保つためにはやはり自ら食生活をコントロールしなくてはいけないということですね。で合わせてスポーツをしたりとかウォーキングをしたりとかしてより健やかな健康状態を保つというようなことが必要だとは思うんですけれども一言で言ってしまうとその求めているものを得るために
その道をしっかり走っていくということが大切なんだというふうに思います。よくそのいろいろな研修会でもお話をするんですけどもその研修に受講された方にこういうふうに質問します。皆さん問題問題ってよくありますよね。あ問題が起きた。今問題の中にいます。じゃあその問題をその受講されている一人一人が持っている辞書の中で考えたとしたら問題はあなたの私たちのその辞書の中には何て書いてありますかっていうふうにお聞きしたそしてその答えを求めていることがすごく私はあります。よく講習とか研修をやらせていただくとその中からその,じその中からというかそのところからスタートすることが多いんですけれども問題って何ですかってそうすると私の問題は、まあ、先ほどの体重の話であったら何キロオーバーしてますとか歩くのが大変なんですとかちょっと走ると。心拍数が上がってとかっていうその現象を皆さん話されるんですけども問題は何かというと単純にただ一つです理想とされている姿理想である姿と現在の状態のその落差英語で言うとギャップって言いますけれどもそのギャップが何かその落差が問題といいう,うに私私たちは認識していますでは私たちクリスチャンがその問題は何かと言ったら私たち神を信じる者は聖書に書いてあるその内容が本当に私たちにとっての最も正しいことであって最終的な権威ファイナルオーソリティというようなふうに位置づけていますけれどもそれと今の私たちのその状況今の毎日の生活の態度自分の心の態度心の姿勢この落差が問題であるということになっていきます。そのの時にに私たちはどのようにするかとというと聖書に戻っていってあ聖書にはこういうふうに書いてあるんだ例えば聖書が大きく大きく私たちに言っていることは自分自身を愛するように隣人を愛しなさいというふうに言われています隣人ってふって今お家にいらっしゃる方ご家族と共にいらっしゃる方隣の方の顔を見てください隣人自分自身を愛するようにそのお隣にいらっしゃる方を愛されていますかこの朝もし複数の方と共にいらっしゃれば隣の方に「私はあなたを愛しているよ」そういうふうに伝えてくださいそうしたら本当に聖書に書いてある通り自分自身を愛するように隣人を愛しなさいもちろん隣の家の方かそれから職場で隣に座っている方ご一緒に働いている方地域の方すべてですもしできていなければそれが聖書との落差になりますまた聖書には大食いをしていけません大酒飲みになってはいけませんというふうにも書いてありますまた、会員を犯してはいけませんとも書いてあったりします。不道徳なことをしてはいけませんというふうにも書いてあったりします。もし、そことの差があるのであれば、そこが私たちの今の問題でもあります。また、経済の面で言えば、神様は繁栄を与える神です。神の御国には貧困も何もありません。豊かに豊かに私たちにいろいろなものをご用意してくださっています聖書には私たちの神は
その羊私たちを豊かに豊かにその多くの物質的にも霊的にも物を与えてくださる本当に緑の牧場にふさして飽きるほどに食べさせてくださるというふうに聖書には書いてありますですから私たちが必要なことは聖書に書いてあるその内容と今私たちが求めていること私たちの生活態度が心の内容がどれぐらい落差があるかギャップがあるかっていうことをこの朝確認してその聖書に書いてある内容に沿うような形でこの1年間が暮らせることがもしくはその聖書にあるような態度をとっていくことが勝利者として1年を過ごすことなんではないのかなっていうふうに思います。そしてじゃあこの1年を力強く終わらすためどんなふうなことがポイントなのかというのはもちろん私たち神を信じる者にとっては聖書に書いてある通り神の国とその義を第一に求めるということです。それから2つ目は心を尽くして思いを尽くして知性を尽くして。力を尽くして神をある愛していくということです。特にこの二つ目のマルコによる福音書の十二章の三十節に書かれていること、心を尽くし、思いを尽くし、知性を尽くし、力を尽くしてあなたの神である主を愛せよっていうふうに書かれているんですけれども、ここは。神と私たち人との関係を示しているんですがその中で神が私たちに何とかしたらいいよっていうようなアドバイスをしているとか提案をしているわけではなくて命令をしています。神は愛せよというふうに命令をされています。ですのでこの1年過ごしていく中でもこれも本当に大切なことになります。ポイントは2つです。神の国とその義を第一にしましょう。心を尽くし、思いを尽くし、知性を尽くし、力を尽くして、あなたの神である主を愛するということです。そして、何よりも自分の信じているその神を信じていくということです。これはどういうことかと申し上げますと、目の前に起こっていることよりも、神を信じるということです。どんなに目の前の状況が悪くても、病気であっても、経済的につらくても、人間関係がズタズタであってもそれよりもそれを完全に回復してくださる神の方を信じるということですポイントとしては私がよくやる方法は目の前の問題に目を当ててしまうともう本当それしか見えなくなってしまいますのでちょっとだけ辛い時は上を見てくださいそこに私たちの神がおられますその神を見上げることで問題は逆に見えなくなりますし見下すような形になります私たちはすでに処理をしているものです買っているものですからこの1年力強く生きていきたいなって思いますそして先ほど申し上げた神の国とその義を求めるということで求めるというこの意味はそこを目指して努力をするということです探すということではないです目指して努力をするっていうのがここの解釈です。で神の義というのは神様のやり方を真似るということです。ですのでこの2つ目指して努力をします。神様のやり方を目の前に置いてそこを目指して努力をするのが神の国とその義を求めるということになります。それでは一言お祈りいたします。愛する天のお父様、この朝をありがとうございます。どうぞ次の一週間、私たち一人一人にその生きる力を与えてください。すべての苦しみ、困難から回復するように、あなたの力を受けることを宣言します。そして、すべて
元の状態以上に戻り神の憐れみと恵みの中にあることを宣言しますこの朝この朝次の1週間あなたから大いなる恵みと力を与え健やかにすげる過ごせることを宣言してイエス・キリストの皆によってお祈りいたします皆様は本当に寒い毎日続いていますから本当にお体に気をつけてくださいね本土でお聞きの皆様沖縄はもう桜咲いてますよお時間あればぜひ遊びに来てくださいそれではまた来週の土曜日に皆さんとお会いできることを本当に楽しみにしています。良き一週間を過ごされてください。God bless you.